Hello and welcome to the show. I'm here on Forza Horizon 2 with another silly car build. My vehicle today is the BMW M1. I'm going to give this car a go because it can have a very big engine in it. Also, I do quite like the M1, especially like the DRM version. Unfortunately, as much as I would like to, it doesn't have the full sort of DRM or Group 5, Group 4, one of those was the other name for it, body kit you get on there. This is quite crazy. All the pro car body kit even, that would be kind of fun. We don't have that stuff, but hey, we do have going? a, do well, the biggest you? engine that we can swap into cars as far as I'm aware. We have the 6 litre V12 from a Ferrari Enzo that gets an awful lot of power. You can actually have a decent choice of engines. <laughs> 6.2 V8 yet again is here. We could have the the V10, I think that's from a Gallardo, uh, but we're going to go with the big V12. Now, from, from what I remember, of uh, Forza 5, this will be very powerful by the time that I'm done with it. I'm hoping that this car might not be too bad to drive. I mean, fingers crossed, it is... Did you say the M1 is a, in a supercar? Mm, possibly. It's certainly designed for speed. It's designed for a lot more speed than most of the cars that, uh, <laughs> that I build up on this. Uh, okay, I'm, I'm really hoping that the PI doesn't go up into X-Class. I don't think it will. Never quite sure with these. Tire-wise, what have we got? They're fairly sizable. Fairly sizable. I think this stands a good chance of going quicker than the Noble. I, th I, 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 would, I would expect it to be good enough. Mm, it could be, could be quite, quite sli <laughs> slidey with, with this much power. Uh, are we going to... okay, it's, take, it's taking its sweet time. Looking at the weight go down, mm, it's going to have... It might be a little bit lighter than perhaps ideal for keeping these cars under control. While, yes, of course, a very light car, very, very good under braking. When we start having as much power as we do in these, though, such lightness is not necessarily a good thing. Lotus 11 is a good example. Incredibly light, very hard to drive, because it becomes very, very twitchy. I don't know why this drops the PI on these. When we <laughs> that has been doing that on a few cars now, I'm not entirely sure. Also, this is a a decent length of car. It's not. It's also not too narrow, so we we shouldn't be too twitchy. Everything about this car suggests that it might be all right when it comes to the driving front. Stick the weight reduction in. Yeah, that's actually a pretty good weight. Pretty good weight for a car on here. Yeah, I'm quietly confident about this one. Now we come to put in, whoopsie, the engine parts. Now, I'm not sure if all of the engines translate directly over from Forza 5. This, if it is a similar thing, should have almost 1,200 horsepower, which would be the most powerful car that we have used on this. Uh, I'm hoping we're going to get, oh, we're up over the 1,000 horsepower mark, which is <laughs> which is always good. Yeah, I'm, this is going to be the most powerful one. Uh, it's going to be one of the most powerful engines, the Veyron and the, the Venom. I, I would love to be able to use their engines in other cars. Unfortunately, you can't. So a highly modified Enzo engine is the most exciting that we can get. And when we stick on the intercooler, at 1,182. Pretty sure that's the same horsepower. Uh, the weight's gone up a little bit as I've added on, uh, <laughs> on that intercooler. It's a lot of power. It's not a huge amount of weight, but I, I do think that this is going to be okay. I mean, it will slide if I'm not very careful with it. I do think it'll be okay, though, when it comes to the track. Now, the circuits that we or that I use for this is the first one in Sisteron. I use the Rivals mode for this, as it's the easiest way to keep track track of times, basically. The uh, Citadel circuit, where I have got six laps to beat a time set by a Noble M600, a completely standard Noble, went around this track in 56.414 seconds. And I'm now going to try and beat it with this BMW M1. The fastest car we've had was a Mazda MX-5 at a 56.1. It could potentially go quicker than that. I think this car may, may have the speed to do it. However, this is a nasty circuit. This is not a not an easy track for these silly car builds because it is very tight. It is very twisty. There is practically no straights for us to deal with at odd here. And in a car with near enough 1,200 horsepower, that's 
That's a daunting prospect. Okay, off the line. Yeah, I mean, of course, we burst into wheel spin off the start line, but what are we like through through these first corners? That is the big question. Oh, we are very <laughs> we are so fast that uh, get a little bit carried away. Now, this is already doing pretty well. Uh, we've got a little bit of snaking going on, trying to get it under control there. Gee, <laughs> 140 miles an hour into that corner is scary. Yeah, it's mighty, mighty quick. Now, this is a real test. Trying to put this much power down out of these hairpins is often what kills the silly cars, but not for the BMW. Look at that. It got out of the corner absolutely fine. That's... <laughs> Okay, I expected to be a little bit more trouble than that. Jeez, it is very, very good on the traction front. Uh, got to be, of course, got to be very careful over the bumps and with this much power. Yeah, it's going to go sideways if we aren't careful with the car. Ooh. <laughs> okay, that was my, my bad. A little bit out of position on that one. Now, let's not outbreak ourselves so much. Again, we've got a little bit of understeer going on in the M1. Ooh. <laughs> That's not quite the line that I want to be taking up there, and again, we're out a little bit wide. If we get a minute to go flat out, which is, is not very not very many of them, this thing can seriously pick up speed if it wants to. That's, that's nearly 120 into this hairpin. It's definitely a nicer drive than the M5 we had last. In fact, this is probably the nicest of all the cars I've had to drive. It's easier to drive than the MX-5. I'm, I can get it to flat out out of, these, or out of that hairpin before the next one it would go flat out, with none of the other cars have done that. The bumps, ooh, <laughs> bumps not nice. We've done a 55.7 on our first flying lap. That tells you a lot about this. It's, it's quick. It's not that easy to drive. I mean, you do have to have a lot of concentration with this car, but nowhere near as much as with some of the previous vehicles. Again, it's another car, much like the M5 that went last time. It's surprisingly good. I can't quite take that flat out, and we can't take that one there flat out either. But you can get a hell of a lot closer. You can be a lot more aggressive with this car. You can really boot it out of the corners. That's that's quite impressive. Can we go... No, we can't quite... If we do just boot it, I'm not letting off the, <laughs> the throttle there. It's perfectly controllable. Yes, it's wasting time spinning the wheels and stuff, but it's not actually uncontrolled. That's quite impressive. <laughs> that is quite impressive. It deals with the bumps okay. But it's, it's not amazing over those bumps, but then I'm not expecting a lowered supercar to be amazing. Change of direction through there is not too bad. Yeah, I mean, we're not really having very much oversteer from this car at all. This is near enough a 1,200 horsepower rear-wheel drive supercar. This is not really oversteering. I mean, it's, it's spinning the wheels up on power delivery, but it's not oversteering very much. It's not un This is an incredible car. <laughs> it really is. That's... Hmm. I, this could be one of the best I've built. The Jaguar E-Type from Forza 5 really amazed me. This is on, on a par with the with the E-Type, I have to say. I think perhaps the E-Type is a little bit more surprising because of its age. This is a bit more of a modern car. But still, it's... <laughs> On a track like this, I mean, the Jag was fighting against Sebring. This is on, that's gone even quicker, a 55 dead. The M1 is flying around here. And I'm, whoa, okay, that was, that was my bad. That was my bad. <laughs> but even with bumps and curbs and crests and dips and stuff, all of this power, and this car is pretty damn drivable. I like it. Can we go any quicker? Can we get into the 54s? Hmm, it's... Well, I would imagine so, but <laughs> being that close, the question is, with, with one lap to go, can we do it? Yeah, there is a small amount of understeer if you are not careful in this car, which is alright by me. I don't have too much of a pro <laughs> problem with that. The fact that, you know, trying to, trying to use this much power normally has far, has far more to do with how well you drive the car than if it's got a small bit of understeer in it. Okay, we've got to get neat and tidy onto this final final lap. I said neat and tidy. That was, a, that was a little bit scrappy and out of shape coming up that hill. Yeah, you've got to, still got to watch out on the dips through that final section. Whoop, take out the lamp post. Well, that's a new way through there. I'm ended up out very, very wide, which is not, <laughs> not ideal, but I can take a... Uh, 
can take a slightly better line. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's not... <laughs> it's not the perfect car. It's still got small issues, but nowhere near the normal amount of <laughs> a city car build. I, I'm liking it. I don't think we're going to go quicker than that 55, unless I can pull out something incredible on this next bit. Careful on the... We're trying to be careful on the pan. There we go. Once we get it into fourth, definitely, definitely flat out. And around the next one, try and feed in the power a little bit gently anyway. And we're going to throw it up the hill. It's the final lap. <laughs> Across the line, hey, we did get it quicker, 54.6. That is a mighty fast car. BMW M1 has got... <laughs> That's very fast, it's got almost two seconds quicker than the Noble. Not as easy to drive as the Noble, that is for sure. But that is very, very fast. And I'm suspecting it's going to be pretty damn quick in a straight line as well. I mean, when you look at the, the M1... It is a very aerodynamical shape, maybe not quite as aerodynamical as some modern cars, but it's a low-slung supercar. I reckon we could well get over 240. We could get up towards the 250 mile an hour mark with it. I mean, we've got the Capri to 240, and that was using less power than this. We could potentially see this go very, very quickly, which is good. And I think this will be quite controllable as well, once we do start getting it up to those... Uh, high speeds, then I, th I think we will have enough grip. I think we will have enough grip in this car. Whereas some of the other ones, maybe not. The Jeep <laughs> at 160, that was terrifying to take a corner. But uh, I think, again, I think this will be definitely the fastest car we've had with so much power. We'll have to be careful with the dodging of the traffic, but again, the changing of directions through that run, it was pretty good at the changing direction. It was pretty good at dealing with everything. Uh, we'll, just have a, we'll, have a, we'll have a quick wheel spin. Can we get something interesting while, <laughs> while we're here? Come on, car. Eh, well, some money. I'll, I'll, take, I'll take some money. Uh, right, so we want to go to the motorway. I test all of my cars or oh, for, for the speed runs on the motorway. Yes, I could use the airfield. Not as much fun, though, and it's also not really long enough. The, while, yes, you have a big flat area, the airfield isn't quite a long enough distance to get the cars really to their top speed. I think I had a McLaren P1, and I couldn't get it past the 240 mark on the runway before it ran out of space. Whereas on the motorway, we have more than enough space, more than enough length to get the cars up to their speed. However, we have got to worry about traffic, and we have got to worry about corners, and there are a few bumps that I've found in the past that have slightly screwed over a couple of cars. So... Yeah, it's a, very, it's a very good test of these vehicles. Uh, what does it reckon the top speed? 231 at the moment. Let's remove the aero, and then we may have to tinker with the gears a little bit. Also, the, it is going to go downhill towards the end of this, so we can get it even faster. 230, okay, so gears are going to be uh, to need quite a lot longer. 260 would be impressive if we could do that. Uh, we are reckoning 258. <laughs> this could be mighty, mighty fast. Can we, okay, 258, I reckon we can get 260 down the hill. It is going to test all the aspects of this car's handling, though, to get it to that, <laughs> to get it to that speed in traffic. Well, let's go and find out and see, <laughs> see what it does. Uh, okay, we're going to dodge through them. If, if I can pull this off, we're going to get humongous amounts of skill points for this. This seems to be the easiest way of getting skill points. We get drifting and sliding around. Just go for speed runs. Uh, Jesus, we're at 225 already. That is incredible. The acceleration on this car. Ooh, dodge the stuff, dodge the stuff. <sighs> okay, then just doesn't give you... <laughs> it's just not enough time to even think about that. Again, we're already going to crack the 230 soon on this ne <laughs> next bit of road. Okay, yeah, this is very, very fast. 240 miles an hour. It's already going quicker than the Capri ever got to. Whoa, okay, let's... This gets to its top speed stupidly fast. How are you... I thought we would... <laughs> How did it do that? Okay, corner, corner, corner. Still, we've got decent grip. I mean, I'm not having problems with it. the back end letting go over the bumps or anything. Whoa, dodge the transit in the muscle car doing silly things in the middle of the motorway. Uh, 214, okay, let's just back that off. I'm not sure where there's going to be traffic around the corner. Okay, then we can go for it again. <laughs> this is an incredible car. Do you, like, it's, I'm not having... Uh, most of the cars I've driven down here, they've been sliding around at these sort of speeds when we're dealing with corners. This, even with the aero taken off, 
planted 230 miles an hour dodging the traffic and still we keep going <laughs> this is a phenomenal vehicle okay dodge some more traffic now it's coming up to this scary corner or one of the scary corners we're going really very very fast here okay keep your foot down keep your foot down try uh, i don't trust the ai cars around here okay 220 miles an hour out of the other side come on we want to get i want to get 260 out of this i really <laughs> really want to get so that was the bump that killed something I had last time, the M5, I think. This is still, it's absolutely fine. Here we go, 250 miles an hour down the first hill. Come on, car. Got some more in you. See, that amount of grip is incredible. 255. Come on, I want 260 miles an hour. Then we will, then, then you can have a rest. <laughs> wow, this is an incredible vehicle. 259. Come on, one more mile an hour. We're gonna get it. No, there's a bump. Can we take this corner at 260 almost? That is <laughs> how much grip is there in this car? Woo! Dodge the thing. Not quite 260. I don't know unless it flashed very, very briefly and I didn't see it. Uh, okay, now it's getting a bit narrow. <laughs> oh dear! I'll slam on the brakes there. Woo! 259 miles an hour in a BMW M1, and even that, with no downforce, the back end does not let go on it. Hey, you got a new personal best with the skill points. Thank you, car. That's a ridiculous vehicle. I don't know how it has so much grip, but with perhaps the exception of the Selene S7 that, that I had on, on Forza 5, of all of the stupid cars I've built up, this has been by far the easiest, most controllable car I've had to drive. It's, <laughs> it really is quite an incredible vehicle. And it can do almost 260, nearly so bloody close miles an hour. Well, there we go. That is it for this silly car build. So thank you very much for watching. And until next time, uh, goodbye. Thank you, game, for recording that one.